any element in your design does not communicate its intended message then there is no need of the element being there hello you guys welcome and welcome back to another video in today's video i'm going to review this design i came across on a facebook group called graphic designers africa What's up you guys, my name is Dennis, helping you build your graphic design skills. If learning graphic design and making creative designs interest you, consider subscribing and don't forget to turn on the bell so you get notified when I upload a new video like this one. So I came across this design 10 hours after it was posted on the group and the designer seeking for corrections. And the first thing that came to my mind was the mistakes. This video will help you so much if you look into designing creative designs and you don't want to make mistakes when designing just like this one. And a disclaimer, I don't criticize people's design negatively. I only add value. So don't see this video as a form of mockery or critics on the designer. I'm only adding value to correct the mistakes as it has been seen on the design the first thing i observe about this design is the warped image if you observe closely the main image on the design is warped and it has been distorted such a way that it makes the picture look the way it's not supposed to look and i've always made these corrections in my videos about mistakes graphic designers make that you should never warp or distort images forever just as you can see on the design the picture of the lady has been reduced and dragged in such a way that it's not normal the proper way of dragging a picture or resizing a picture or scaling a picture is to use your cursor and enlarge it from the extreme left or extreme right or the down left or the down right of the picture you don't drag pictures from the side so it won't distort the picture my second observation on this design is the poor use of colors choosing the right color wheel for your design is not so easy but to make things easy for you here you have to familiarize yourself with the color wheel when you understand the color wheel perfectly you tend to choose the right colors for your designs at any point in time and you will never make the mistake of using the wrong colors for your design from my observations on this design the use of colors on the design are very poor there are a variety of contradicting colors on the design which is not supposed to be so when it comes to posters design like this i tend to limit myself to try adding colors which are three colors facing each other adjacently on the color wheel that is why i said you have to familiarize yourself with the color wheel so when i'm able to choose these three colors i tend to work with them perfectly on the background on my text and every other element i need to add colors on my design so for that our advice always limit yourself to two or three colors you can match easily and if it's so hard to choose colors you can seek recommendations from other designers or a friend who have eye for cool colors my next observation on this design is the poor text alignment as we all know in graphic design or even in typography there are four special types of alignment which is the left alignment the right alignment the center alignment and the justify alignment for designs like this i prefer if you are working with center alignment then you should use center alignment to centralize your text or you use left alignment to align all your text to the left or use right alignment to align all your text to the right and not capturing your text everywhere on the background like the design you are seeing in this design the text are scattered everywhere and it's not showing its visual hierarchy as it's supposed to be so i prefer you study text alignment very well so you know how to align your text in design never make this mistake as a graphic designer be sure of the type of alignment you want to work with on your design before going into the design next observation on my list is the poor visual hierarchy i define visual hierarchy as the arrangement of elements in your design from the most important element to the less important element the use of visual hierarchy on your design is a means of directing your viewers on the elements they should see first at a glance of the design and also the elements that you see next 
and gradually till they go through all the information on your design in a sample design what i saw is elements that are less important are even getting more attention than the most important elements such as the call to glory it should be a type that explains itself the use of typography is to use it to explain the message you want to convey and in this design apart from the 3d effect on the call to glory i think there should be no 3d effects there because there are no other 3d effects and the design is not a 3d design i think the use of that 3d effect is not perfect for call to glory instead i recommend a typeface either a serif typeface or a script typeface for that in a sample design i would recommend you break call to and make the glory under it and using a bold font for glory and using a small font for call to then it should be aligned to the right on the right side of the design where you have the do that would have been perfect there and the ladies image would take the space up that would have been perfect and looking at the part where you have the let misses and the other names that follows i think let misses should have been smaller than the name itself which is supposed to be the first name to pronounce better than every other names and every other names comes under the main name while the let miss is smaller on top and also on the part where you have the burial date and where you have the may our gentle soul rest in peace i think those type should have been smaller than even the name and much attention should not be drawn to that date because anyone that sees the information on the poster will like to take a close look at the date so you make it small yet still having contrast that people can read from far and not enlarging the text to look bigger than the name itself one thing every graphic design beginner should understand about poster design is that whatsoever elements you use on your design either the text or other shapes and elements on the, on the design it should be such that every element should be readable from far high sight so you have to learn how to use good colors and use good text size to make the design or make the text readable from far high sight it should not be something that one should stress to read like on the edge where you have the years it's too small that one can see easily but no matter how small you make your text look on your design it should be such that one can still read it without stressing the eye so all these i was talking about visual hierarchy so learn how to use visual hierarchy on your design by arranging your text or the elements on your design in such a way that you direct your viewer from the most important element to the less important element so you don't have to scatter elements everywhere on your design and making the most important elements on your design to have such effects that pops out and stands out to your viewer the next thing i observe about this design is lack of negative space and in this design the designer tries to fill all spaces of the design and i always recommend never to fill all spaces on your design those spaces are known as white space or negative space those spaces brings the attraction in your design it makes your design look perfect and nice so never fill all spaces on your design try to make your design as minimal as possible and my last observation about this design is the use of less important elements the first less important element I spot on the design was the bird flying on the poster. Well, the bird is not bad, but what message does it bring to the design? Actually, graphic design is a means of communication. What message does the bird communicate? If any element in your design does not communicate its intended message, then there is no need of the element being there you have to take it off and work with the important element that communicates a good message on your design and a bonus observation about this design there is no margin at all on the design if you look at all the elements in the design they are too close to the edge of the design and i have always said this in most of my videos about graphic designers mistakes or mistakes graphic designers makes that using margins in your design makes your design look good and looks professional and if there is no margin in your design some text or elements in your design tend to be cut off that is after your design reach the final stage so add margins to your design and make sure you align your design in such a way that the text or elements are not too close to the edge look at call to glory it's too close to the top extreme left and 
even the smaller picture is too close to the right edge of the design and that of the burial date and every other element down the design they are too close to the edge so i recommend you use margins on your design so you won't make such mistakes again to add more value to my recommendations i am going to make a redesign of this poster so let's head on to the computer i'll be using corel draw to make this Design. So this is Corel Draw 2020 and this is the first screen you see once you open up your Corel Draw. And the next thing you need to do to design a poster, you click on new document and this dialog box pops up. You leave your page size at A3 and since it's gonna be a printed poster, you leave it at CMYK and you make it orientation portrait since the design is already a portrait design. Then you click on OK. And this workspace open up like this so this is your a3 uh, workspace where you have to design and to design this particular poster I'm going to bring in these uh, two resources I have for the poster and that is the original poster design itself and the one I've edited by taking off the background with Photoshop so first thing I'm going to do is to detach this picture from the image itself so i can work on them differently okay i think i should use pen tool to do this you open up your pen tool and select like this and create a shape around this first picture press shift and select the other picture and click on intersect and that looks fine click on the shape again press shift and select the picture and click on trim to delete of the first one so you can detach the picture like this convert it to bitmap and that's fine you click on this and also convert to bitmap and that looks perfect so next thing i'm going to do is to correct the the warp the distorted image so i'm going to click on the picture and drag it here originally this was how the image was supposed to be resized you resize images by clicking here and drag you click here and drag or you click here and drag or here never you hold here to resize the image or here or here or here you resize images from here from here from here or from here and if you are to resize the image evenly you press shift on your keyboard and hold here and the picture open up this way or you can hold here and drag to one side but pressing shift will help you to open up the picture uh, like evenly like this and that's fine so i'm going to correct the distorted image by simply holding here it's not right but i'm using this to correct the distorted image by dragging it upwards like this to when i assume the picture is in its correct structure okay so at this point i think the picture is at its correct structure i think i should open it up again and this looks nice so this is the correct structure of the picture assuming this is the correct structure of the picture and for this other picture i feel it's okay like this so i'm going to create a shape by clicking double clicking on rectangle tool to get this a3 shape like this you can give it a white color for the main time and right click here to take off the outline and the next thing i'm going to do is to power clip this picture inside my shape so you right click on this and click on power clip inside okay fine click on the shape and it comes inside the shape like this press alternate on your keyboard to select the picture and bring it here then you can open up the picture like this and open it up like this and take it upwards a little and this position looks great you can reduce it once again and that looks fine and using this concept of the original auto i'm going to create a circle shape like this but before then i'll open up my power clip click on the shape and click on edit to open up your power clip this way so you click and hold to see your ellipse tool and you select your ellipse tool and create this circle like this you can reduce this picture again so you have enough space down here and you do it this way so this looks fine then you can give it a color that rhymes with the picture so i'm going to look at this hair tie and that's the color i would like to work with so i'm going to give it red just like this and right click here 
take off the outline then i will fill this red with black like this and this looks cool i think i should centralize this double click on the center of this interactive view tool and give it red and click on the extreme end and give it black like this and this looks okay so this is how the design looks like and i'm going to create another shape like this click on the circle after you have opened up the power clip you click again to get these curves then you hold here and drag upwards and right click before you leave then you can give this a uh, yellow color deep yellow and that's fine you press control page down to send it to the back then i'm going to fill this yellow color with orange with orange and this looks fine then you close your power clip to get this look like this then i'm going to bring in this other image as well create a circle like this press control while doing this to get a perfect circle and give this circle this same feel on the yellow part so i'm going to click here and give it yellow and right click here to take off the outline and reduce the circle once again like this press shift while doing this and right click before you leave you can give it a white color then you power clip this circle inside here by right clicking on the picture and drag into the white shape and leave then you click on power clip inside press alternate and select the picture and adjust like this and this looks perfect i'm fine then for this i'm going to fill it with the red color also and add your using your interactive field tool you fill it with black once again so it fits with the color palette using for the design so i'm going to fill the yellow shape as well with orange and this is what we have got so i'm going to adjust this once again and that looks fine select all and press ctrl g to group and bring it down here we can reduce this again and let me shift this picture to the left by pressing alternate you can select the picture press alternate and click on the picture to select it inside the power clip then press shift while you are moving it to the side of the design that looks fine then you can bring this down here so this looks uh perfect for this and fine it's gonna be a minimal design so i'm going to add a little shadow to this to make it pop up a little fine then you reduce the transparency and reduce the feathers as well and that looks cool there and then i'll type call to glory here call to glory and i had to break this text just as the way i recommended earlier and press ctrl k to break the text like this and click on glory i will using intro inline as the typeface for glory and i'm going to increase this a little then give it a yellow color like this uh, sorry orange color then i'm going to fill it with red this time uh red and i'm also thinking what if i use red here and give fill it with black as well i think this looks more perfect and since i'll be working with a plain white background this looks perfect for it so you click on your shape tool and adjust the tracking of the text like this even if the text overlaps each other it still looks fine considering the effect i want to use for this design then you press ctrl k to break the text apart select all and click on your drop shadow tool and create a shadow like this to the left and you see the shadows shows the way the text overlap each other you can adjust the transparency to 59 and adjust the feathers to 10 and this looks perfect you can reduce the feathers once again or reduce the transparency as well to 47 i think that looks perfect you know actually i'm doing this design this design is not planned i'm just redesigning it as it is seen so i can make mistakes during the design and changing ideas at any point in time i'll click on call to and give it futura 
I like working with Futura though it's one of the oldest typeface I have known but it still looks very cool working with it then you click on medium normal that's Futura medium and place it here then you leave it at black color it's still fine you group and take it upwards down here you can enlarge it a little and this looks fine then I'll take this up a little and you can see I've been able to obey rules in my design by leaving the margin on my design I'm not taking my elements too close to the edge of my design now this is the margin using your ruler bar you can predict the margin for your design just like this you see all my designs are aligned to this aspect and it looks very perfect that way it's not getting too close to the extreme and also imagine here now margins don't really affect pictures it's always actually for the text itself so i'm placing it here also so this is my margin and all my design should be inside the margin i've been able to obey those rules whenever i'm designing next thing i want to look into is where i have the name so i'm going to type let's misses I can't pronounce this name actually. It's a native name of where I don't know how to use their language perfectly. So, uh, okay. I think this other name is a nickname and it's supposed to stand out alone. So, the way I'm going to break this text is the order I use in arranging names, especially for funeral posters like this. This is where the way I break the names. I press Ctrl K to break the names apart. Then you click on the main name, which I assume it's this. I'm going to give it intro in line as well and adjust the tracking, but this time not overlapping each other. Then you enlarge it this way. You can bring this down and bring this down once again and change the typeface to Futura and make it bold and reduce it this way. Click on Let Me See and change the typeface to Futura as well and bring it down here. Remember I said Let Me See is supposed to be small. They leave it here. And bring this here. This should be at the center. Click on this and give it Futura as well. But this time make it smaller than the names here and bring it here. So you select all and press C. Then you bring this. Pressing C helps you to centralize the whole stuff. So you enlarge it this way and bring it up here. This looks fine. You click on white to give it a white color like this. And you see how it looks very perfect down there. You click on the main name and give it yellow as another color. Sorry. Click and give it yellow. And fill it with orange. Uh, white is perfect. So I'm going to leave it at white. So I'm going to select all and press G to group and give it a shadow click on this now you click on copy shadow properties selecting your shadow tool and select the first shadow which we had on the design already then you click on this and adjust your transparency and adjust your faders as well and this looks perfect then next thing i'm going to do is to bring in where i have the edge so i'm going to using my paint tool i'm going to create this straight line and give it two points and right click here to give it a white outline then create this circle like this you can take it here this looks fine and give it white right click here to take off the outline it's also a nice way to organize your your uh, elements in your design so i'm going to type here 70 and this time i'm going to use the intro in line as well for the 70 and use my shape tool to adjust the tracking as well and bring it here leave it with red color and enlarge it this way and fill it with uh black as well and that looks perfect okay that's fine and next thing i'm going to do is to type in this yes uh 1951 to 2021 okay that looks fine then i'm going to bring this here 
and change the typeface to Futura as well. Then take this up, put this here, make it bold, press Ctrl K to break the text, and you can leave this with black, and this also should be red to separate it from the years. So I'm going to leave it with red and type in here um h i think that was the language you used there h yeah then i'm going to change the typeface to future as well and take this up here and that looks fine then to add more nice look to this you can adjust this like this press shift and click and drag this circle to enlarge it this way and right click before you leave then you have a duplicate circle like this click here to take off the fill and right click on white to give it a white outline you can increase the outline like this and this looks nice and perfect it's just a simple approach to designing a poster like this perfectly and the next thing i'm going to do is to type in the burial date so you type in burial date and sorry give it this friday 16th april 2021 and you bring it here and change the typeface as well to futura and make it bold so it's easily red but not too large you leave it here and give it white change the burial date to yellow and one thing you should observe about this design i limit myself to only uh i limit myself to few colors here if you observe colors that dominate this design are colors like um red black and yellow also a little of orange and these colors are colors that works very well together perfectly and if you observe i work with center alignment for the design by centralizing everything in the design and lastly i'm going to create this shape like this at the bottom and give it i think yellow looks perfect here so i'll take this upwards a little considering my uh okay i think i'm gonna create another shape here mm, okay i'm going to use this shape to add more emphasis to the date by converting the shape to white press alternate and click to select the text inside or behind the white shape and press on your page up to send it to the top then you give it a black color so it comes up this way then you change the burial date to red and this is how i've used contrast to separate the burial date from every other element in the design you can select all these and reduce it once again so it won't look too big and taking all of this space and i have a lot of negative space or white space on my end of my design and giving my design a balanced look that looks cool and next thing i'm going to do is to type in her gentle soul rest in peace amen <laughs> that looks fine then you change this to futura as well and bring it down here make it bold also and place it here can enlarge a little press shift and select c press c select shift and press c to centralize that looks fine so i've been able to pick the important elements on this design here and i think i should adjust this shape again upwards that looks fine so i'm covering the woman's bow or that but i need space for my design i need enough space for my design increase this a little and take it upwards increase again press ctrl g to group press c to select or oh, and centralize so that's fine so this is the look of the design and to even make this design look more real and looking cool using our color palette i'm going to select the background itself and open this up and give it pale yellow you see how it looks like on the background so i'm going to fill it with yellow as well yellow here 
and click on elliptical fountain fill and reverse fill to reverse this fill like this and adjust it this way so it won't look too yellowish and you see the color blending with the image itself and i would have loved to introduce a texture background to this design but for this i think this information here and the way it looks is perfectly okay so this is a nice way to design a poster like this this is the final look of the design after redesigning this and following the rules just as i have recommended so if you look up to designing an obituary poster like this this is the concept you will use thank you so much for watching this video if this video interests you so well consider liking and don't forget to share this video to other designers that may find this video helpful thank you very much for watching this video i'll see you next time